What's up everyone, Acid Glow here. Today we have another video about the lore in Doom. This will be a special 90 minute compilation video of all the previous Doom lore around Classic Doom, Doom 2 and Doom 64. These are all older videos that I have done in the past, but I'm bringing them up now so new subscribers can see them. With all my lore videos in one playlist, it can be hard to sift through all of it just to find Doom lore videos. So this video will cover a variety of topics, things like the early beta version of Doom, the history of design ideas of various monsters like the Imp, Caco Demon, Pinky Demon, the Barons, Hell Knights, and more. I also included some history about id Software, John Romero's involvement in designing the cover art of the game, and some ideas that were cut from the original story of Doom. It's a very extensive video that covers a lot of material source. I even mentioned some things that were brought up in the Doom novels. While this video is mostly around classic Doom lore, I do mention Doom 2016 and Doom 3 in some portions of some topics. But for a video all dedicated to Doom 3 lore, that will come in the future. So, if you want to dive into a video that discusses many topics around classic Doom lore, this video is what you need. It's loaded with a ton of information. And as usual, before we get to the section about lore, I will leave timestamps. This way, you can skip to a topic that you might have missed before. Now sit back and enjoy. What is the Arachnatron in Doom 2? Unlike other creatures that have a demonic form, the Arachnatron stands out as a combination of mechanical legs controlled by a giant brain. While it does have tiny arms, they are barely visible during its animations. Its large blue eyes are known to change color in combat. This demon brain shows a lot of hate towards humans. It looks like a smaller version of the Spider Mastermind, but equipped with a plasma gun. When it spots a target, you can hear the sound of its mechanical legs starting up. As the Arachnatron walks around, the sound of its moving legs are heard, notifying the player that it is nearby. This demon brain also lets out a machine-like sound as it chases a target. and even its death sound resembles failing machinery. The Doom 2 manual describes them like this. Maybe cybernetics wasn't such a great idea after all. Look what the demons have done with it. It seems unfair, somehow, you're not the only guy in hell with a plasma gun. When Doom 2 was in its beta stages, the Arachnatron was going to have a chain gun instead of a plasma gun, but this was changed later on. The Arachnatron was given a plasma gun, and the Spider Demon or Spider Mastermind was given the chain gun. Both enemy types seem to have the same attack patterns. Once they spot a target, they remain still and keep firing. They only start moving when the target is no longer in sight. Despite their movement being very slow, they are persistent. Something that is unusual about its name is despite being linked to spiders, it only has four legs and two organic arms on its body. This is different because when you look at an actual spider, it has 8 legs, while the Arachnatron only has 4 legs. Now the word Tron in its name is mostly linked to instruments, so Arachnatron could translate to something like Spider Instrument. If we look at the Doom source code, the Arachnatron is listed as MT Baby in many sections, so there's a possibility that during the early development of Doom 2, it could have had a name like Baby Spider, considering its similarity to the Spider Mastermind. When Doom 64 was released in 1997, the Arachnatron returned. The Doom 64 manual has a different description about them. It says this, Think of the pain a black widow causes when you disturb her nest. Then think what happens when you stir up one the size of a M60 tank. So its size was increased a little bit. It no longer has four legs and two arms on its body. It now just consists of having six robotic legs and the brain itself seems to have no visible arms anymore, but its eyes were given a more sinister look. 
What's also different about this version is that unlike the original Arachnatron, the ones in Doom 64 are equipped with twin plasma guns. This allows them to fire two plasma shots at once, but they fire in bursts of up to five times. When Doom 3 was released, the Arachnatron and Spider Mastermind were not included, but some artwork for them was used as promotional material. They were replaced by the Vagary boss and the Trites, so in some way we still got enemies that resembled Arachnids. The Arachnatron has only appeared in Doom 2 and in Doom 64. It's not as commonly seen as other demons, but the trailer for Doom Eternal does show two Arachnatrons moving around. There's a good chance they will be seen in-game and not just exclusive to the trailer, because it was mentioned that Doom Eternal will have twice as many demons. However, this Arachnatron seems to only have four legs, and they move pretty slowly. Although, that could just be for the trailer, but they added something new to its body. It now has a tail. It looks like a clamp, but I think it's too short to grab anything unless it extends somehow. But it's most likely a new design for their plasma weapon. The Lost Soul in Doom is another demon from Hell. Their physical appearance is a flaming skull with orange eyes and sharp teeth. It's one of the few enemies that just floats around, waiting to spot a target. When it becomes aware of an enemy, it lets out an evil hissing sound and charges forward, smashing into them. The PC manual says this about them, dumb, tough, flies, on fire, enough said. Lost souls are mostly encountered in groups, trying to overwhelm the player by their sheer numbers. When a beta version of Doom was released, the Lost Souls were silver with blue eyes, and they had no visible flames. They did not fly quickly towards the player, they just merely moved along very slowly. Their attack was also different. They would face the player, then flash for a moment, and release a psychic attack. When the Lost Soul was killed, it would die in a green explosion, while leaving behind a pile of bones. Even though this type of Lost Soul was not in the final version, its image does resemble the face within the invulnerability power-up. The final version of Doom's code has objects and characters labeled as things, along with an associated number. There's something called the Dead Lost Soul, which has an ID of MTMISC65, which produced the death animation from the beta version of the Lost Soul. It was left in the game after different versions, but was not used. During the development of the original Doom game, they planned to create some type of enemy that would spawn lost souls. It was called the Blob, and it was attached to the wall. The idea was later scrapped, but the textures were then used for the inside of the Pain Elemental's mouth in Doom 2. Even though the lost soul appears later in the original Doom game, the PlayStation and Sega Saturn version of Doom have a Pain Elemental that can be found in a secret room on the first level. The Doom RPG game, once again, had more than one type of lost soul. There was the standard version, the Phantom, which was green, that left behind a pile of bones upon dying. This is similar to the beta version of the lost soul in Doom, and the last version is the Nightmare. It's listed as the most powerful version. When you defeat a Beholder, which is another variant of the Pain Elemental, it spawns two Phantoms. Killing a standard Pain Elemental will spawn two Nightmares and the Rahovart will spawn two standard Lost Souls upon dying. In 1997, Doom 64 was released. The sprites on the Lost Soul were upgraded, but the design was mostly the same as the original. However, they did appear to be slightly transparent, and the fire was now only located at the top of their skulls. There seems to be some similarity between the Lost Soul and the skull formation of the Baron of Hell. Their attack methods were made a little more aggressive, but they appear to be weaker, as a single shotgun blast could take them down. The Doom 64 manual has a very short description of them. It says this, It's tough. It flies. It's on fire. Now in Doom 3, the Lost Soul came back with a new design. It was based off the face of a human female, and the back area had some type of rocket engine that pushed it forward. The mutation has caused its teeth and mouth to change in appearance. Since this lost soul came from a human, it is believed that this was caused from an unnatural shockwave that came from a teleporter to hell. When the protective stabilizer failed, the evil from hell was unable to come through. This caused most humans to turn into zombies. There was an audio log from Peter Raleigh that talks about some strange outbreak of dementia. 
This affects around 80% of the participants that went through the portal. Within 72 hours, 75% of them would show signs of paranoia, delusion, and violence. He assumes it is some type of pathogen that attacks the higher brain functions. This would lead to them turning into zombies, but lost souls could possibly manifest inside the infected or expired bodies. Now, in the expansion to Doom 3 called Resurrection of Evil, the lost soul was given a design similar to the original. It was once again a flaming skull with horns, but its name was now the Forgotten One, which is a throwback to the original lost soul's appearance being forgotten until now. While they were more resilient to damage, they were susceptible to the ionized plasma levitator, which is also known as the grabber. You can hold them until they die, or release them early on. Either way, it's a great way to save ammo. There was a book called The Art of Doom, which covered many design aspects of the game in 2016. The Lost Soul went through a few versions until the final one was chosen. During its idle animation in the game, it would have a blue flame. But then, the flames turn orange when it is alerted. Its attack method is to simply fly towards you and explode. There was also a UAC report file on the Lost Soul. It says they were despised by the other demons because of being the weakest and lowest class. They would wander the temples of hell in search of a host body to inhabit. When they explode on a target, it will weaken any lesser willed beings. While their body is then possessed, their soul becomes lost. So that covers the history and evolution of the Lost Soul in Doom. There's been many designs of this demon, so I want to know which one you like the most. Tell me in the comment section. Doom is filled with many monsters from hell. Some of them are hellish creatures, while others are a combination of flesh and cybernetic augmentations. One monster that has some type of unholy power is the Archvile. Appearing in Doom 2, the manual describes them like this. One of the worst of a bad lot. You can't think of enough rotten things to say about him. He's fast, hard to kill casts spells, and resurrects dead monsters. At least these suckers are rare. Their body type was humanoid with peach skin, and they were very tall. The flesh around their abdomen was removed. This would reveal some of their rib cage and spinal column. This new enemy was given unique powers. It would attack by targeting a player within its view. Then a pillar of flame would engulf them. The archvile can be seen putting its hands together. As the fireball explodes in his hands, it deals damage and lifts the player off the ground. This small mechanic can be used to reach areas on a map to cut their completion time, or to explore a place that you normally could not reach. While this attack seems to lock onto a player within the Archvile's view, it can be avoided if you get behind cover. When the Archvile spots a player, it emits a high-pitched sound, similar to what is heard from the Arachnotron. During its development, the Archvile was described as being an evil healer. Now, even if its fire attacks would kill other enemies, it would then reanimate their bodies, and so it was given an evil laugh to match its double personality. One unique fact about its death sound is that developers recorded a young girl saying why, then it was changed by its pitch and mixed with other sounds. This word was meant to question its attacker. Why would it kill the Archvile when it was doing good things for the other demons. The Doom novels had listed the Archvile to produce a heat field that disintegrated bullets, but it was weak against a fire extinguisher. It also went by a different name like Fire Eater. Even though the Archvile had the power of resurrection, this ability would not affect creatures like the Cyber Demon, Spider Mastermind, Lost Souls, Pain Elementals, or other Archviles. It also could not resurrect any bodies that were part of the map's design, and for some reason, the Archvile was removed from some console versions. The Archvile's face does appear on wall textures in some places. During the battle against the Cyberdemon in Episode 2 Mission 8 of the original Doom game, the face of the Archvile, Baron of Hell, and the Icon of Sin are seen around the map. But the strange thing here is that the Archvile did not appear until Doom 2. Now, according to a post by John Romero on Facebook, the Archvile was originally called the Medic, so it's possible it was just cut from the original game, but the wall texture remained. And with the recent trailer for Doom Eternal, we do see a monster that might be the Archvile. When Doom 3 was released, the Archvile was brought back. 
but this time it could not resurrect enemies because their bodies would disintegrate after they were defeated. Instead, they allowed it to simply spawn in enemies. Its fire attack was also chained. It was now a pillar of flame on the ground, and it traveled in a straight line. The Arch Vial was absent in the Doom game from 2016. Instead, it was replaced with a Summoner, which played a similar role. The Summoner would levitate above the ground and teleport quickly across the map. Its main role was to summon other demons by opening a rift to hell. While its abilities are more on the defensive side, it can channel hell energy into an Argent Wave. This Argent Wave can kill most humans, but if they survive, they will transform into the Possessed. In this state, their brains only function on a low level. They do react by instinct and are sometimes territorial. If they are isolated, they will enter a dormant state that can last for a very long time. But one strange behavior from them is they will place human bodies together and perform some type of arcane ritual. These are the early stages of the flesh forming into a gore nest that can open a portal to hell. Even when the possessed have their limbs removed or have pain microchips implanted, they will continue with this ritual. This implies that their actions are being controlled by a higher power. The UAC had a report file on the summoners when a few of them were captured. When they were trapped, they would launch multiple Argent Waves, so they had to be drained of Hell Energy until they were sufficiently sedated. During the study of their anatomy, they discovered that the summoner was in fact a highly evolved subgenus of the imp form. If you compare them side by side, they do have some similarities. They both share a slim build with bony features on the body, so it's possible the imp could evolve into the summoner over time, and the wings on its back could be used for levitation or maybe to adjust the direction of its teleport. They also introduced the Harvester, which had some similarities to the summoner, but it functioned in a different way. It had a beam attack with limited range. It was meant to absorb the target's life force, and this would charge its detonation attack that would launch multiple plasma shots, similar to the BMG, but without the damaging rays. The Harvester was found in the multiplayer beta files, but it was locked away until it was announced later on. So that's it for this video. The main focus was the Arch file and the Summoner. What is the Revenant in Doom? Its appearance is a tall skeleton with golden brown bones. It wears silver body armor that is attached to shoulder mounted rocket launchers. There's some blood covering its lower rib cage and upper legs. As the Revenant moves around, a heavy huffing sound can be heard. Then, when it spots a target, it lets out a demonic scream. The Manual of Doom has some information about the Revenant, and it says this. When a demon dies, they pick him up, dust him off, and wire him some combat gear, and they send him back into battle. No rest for the wicked, eh? You wish your missiles did what his can do. Despite both launchers lighting up when it fires, it only shoots one rocket at a time. Something unique about its rockets is that it fires two different types. A standard rocket that travels in a straight line, and a tracking one that has a trail of grey smoke behind it. Now at close range, the Revenant uses a strong melee attack, but it can sometimes miss. The Revenant does show signs of being affected by almost any weapon, it causes them to flinch back in pain very easily. Therefore, weapons that do consistent damage can stun a revenant long enough until it dies. Since it says the revenant was a former demon, it does not specify which demon it started off as. But the strange thing here is that the skeleton is very human-like. If the Revenant was a demon prior to being killed, it's hard to establish which demon it used to be. Since it has blood dripping down its lower body, it kind of reminds me of the Archvile's bloody arms when it resurrects a dead monster. The features on the Archvile, like the height, skull formation, walk animation, and body structure do look similar to a Revenant. Now it's just my theory, but I think an Archvile could be linked to a Revenant in some way but I could be wrong, and maybe it could have been any other monster, and their skeleton just grew in size when it was resurrected to become the Revenant. Most of the monsters in the original Doom games started off as clay models. 
the sculptures were captured by video camera in different angles, and then rescaled, recolored, and animated for Doom's engine, but an early model of the Revenant shows it did not have any body armor. The meaning of its name is supposed to mean one who returns from death. The Doom RPG game had a few variations of this monster, the Ghoul, Fiend, and the standard Revenant. When Doom 64 was released in 1997, the Revenant was absent from the game, but it did return in Doom 3, which was released in 2004. Its appearance this time did undergo some changes, although still appearing as a skeleton, it now had no blood on its legs. The body armor on its chest was bigger, and its eyes were now green. But one unique feature that was not removed during its development stages was the transparent layer of skin on its body. This looked interesting in the early stages, and so they just kept it on the Revenant. Doom 3 also had a PDA file about the Revenant, and it explains how their missiles are able to track a target. It says their two shoulder-mounted cannons are controlled by its nervous system. This allows it to fire guided, rocket-propelled missiles. When Doom 2016 was announced, some early trailers had already confirmed that the Revenant would return. Its design would resemble the original in some way, but different in a few aspects. It still retained a skeletal figure, but with some mechanical tubes digging into some parts of the body. The abdomen area would also have some exposed organs. Its lower back had some flesh removed, which showed a portion of its spinal cord. The UAC report files on this demon concluded that it was previously a UAC military operative. It was created through cybernetic augmentation and repeated Lazarus wave exposure. Their bones would start to grow from these Lazarus waves and their flesh would tear off in the process. So the origins of the Revenant in Doom 2 were from demons, whereas in Doom 2016, they were created by the UAC from their own military personnel. The Revenant is playable in the multiplayer of Doom 2016. Its primary fire shoots double rockets that cause a lot of damage. But surprisingly, the Revenant does not take any splash damage from its own rockets at close range. Holding down the secondary fire will activate the jetpack. This ability runs off a charge that is displayed on screen at all times. When you stop using the jetpack, it will recharge on its own. If the jetpack is damaged, it becomes unusable for a short time. Even though the Revenant has one of the lowest hit points out of all the demons and multiplayer, it has a combination of mobility and power. The rockets are unlimited, so make sure to use them very often. Even if there are no enemies nearby, you can always shoot rockets down a hall or around a corner. Sometimes, an enemy player would walk into these unsuspecting shots, so fire away. Another creature in the history of Doom, and one of the most common, is the Imp. Their body type seems to be humanoid to some extent, but with various differences. The skin is brown, while the body has spikes protruding in different places. It has sharp claws on its hands and feet, which are suitable for close-range combat, but they specialize in throwing fireballs from a distance. The imp's face and eyes are demonic and twisted, giving off a look of anger and hate. The imp gives off a gargling sound when it is not seen. And to serpent-like sounds when they are alerted. The manual of Doom describes them like this. You thought an imp was a cute little dude in a red suit with a pitchfork. Where did these brown bastards come from? They heave balls of fire down your throat and take several bullets to die. It's time to find a better weapon than that pistol if you're going to face more than one of these SOBs. If we look at the Doom source code, each enemy was given a specific type of text that identifies them by the game code. The imps were labeled as MT Troop. This matches the Doom Bible's original plan at making the Demon Troop the most common type of enemy from Hell. But an early concept was to make the imp a different species from the Demon Troops. They were smaller, able to fly, and there were different versions. In the game Heretic, the gargoyle creatures might have been inspired by this description. There was supposedly a beta version of Doom on the PlayStation 1 console. This was reviewed by the magazine called Maximum. The Nightmare Imp appeared in a picture along with a description of it, but then it was removed from the game for an unknown reason. 
the PlayStation version also had a Spectre Caco Demon, but it only appeared on the level called the Tenements. Because of its location, most players won't realize this is a rare Spectre in Doom. The Doom RPG game did have a few versions of the Imp. There was a standard brown version, the Green Impling, and the Red Imp Lord. When Doom 64 was released in 1997, there were two versions of the Imp. The standard one would return with a brand new design. They still retained their humanoid appearance, but the back of the head was pointed, and the spikes on the body were realigned in different positions. The spikes on the feet were also adjusted. When it comes to the face, the mouth is no longer visible, and the eyes appear to be wider. The overall design of the Imp in Doom 64 had a more sleek appearance. If we compare the Doom 64 manual to the PC manual, they both shared a similar description of the Imp, but replacing the word SOBs with the word mutants. The other type of the Imp moved faster and was transparent. They were called Nightmare Imps. The Doom 64 manual describes them like this. An Imp is bad enough, but picture a faster, more aggressive one. Now the bad news, he's harder to see too. It's possible that their name was taken from the nightmare skill level of the original Doom game, where the imps would move quicker and their fireballs would travel faster. When Doom 3 came out in 2004, the imps' appearance was modified. Their shape would still be humanoid in some way. Their skin was now grey in colour, and you could see bony scales up close on its arms. Its face would now have around 10 eyes, which grants it a wide field of vision and the ability to see clearly in low light environments. These imps would mostly walk on two legs and at a slow speed. Not only did it have a high-pitched screech, it was given more agility, able to pounce a target or climb up railings and walls. The imps in the hell stages appeared somewhat different. Their skin seems to have been burned or maybe even peeled away. During the first teleportation test, a video drone sent back a few frames of images. All they saw was a few sets of eyes looking back. This was evidence that they found another life form. Dr. Betruger asked for security personnel to enter the portal. His plan was to bring back creatures to be examined. Many imps were captured and placed in stasis pods to be studied later on. Their testing showed that imps were carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision. Along with having enhanced strength and agility, they could not figure out how some specimens are able to manifest plasma masses. Even though many human lives were lost in acquiring these specimens, they hope to someday complete genomic mapping to better understand these creatures. When the imps throw fireballs in Doom 3, it was given more than one animation, a quick one and a delayed shot where it lunges forward. There was a second imp in Doom 3 that was not used in the campaign. It would walk on all fours and move a bit quicker. It's possible that this animation was used for the Vulgar in the expansion Resurrection of Evil. The Vulgar itself was an early design that was going to be used for the Archfile, but in the end, they were both separate demons. When they released the Doom 3 BFG edition, some imps were given back the crawling animation in the Lost Missions. Other than that, there really wasn't any difference. There's actually an easter egg in the pentagram that appears in Hell. If you look closely, you can see the face of the original Doom Marine and the UAC logo. The 2005 Doom movie has an imp that is similar in design to the one that was in Doom 3. Now, if we look back at 2015, an early version of Doom shows the imp having a design similar to a Hell Knight, but this was later changed to give the imp a more unique appearance. When it was finally released in 2016, they were smaller compared to the previous versions. Some parts of their body were covered in yellowish hard bone, and the spikes on their backs were now curving upward. Their body type was very thin, and they would move around very quickly while jumping very high. Its attack method seems to focus on evading and throwing fireballs, but sometimes clawing you from close range only to run off again. They would also have different types of fireball attacks, a fast one, and a charged shot for more damage. According to the UAC report files on the Imp, it says they are known to feed off their victims, and their method of harnessing hell energy can be related to the summoner in some way. Some anatomical studies on the summoner gives clues that it could be a highly evolved subgenus of the imp form. The trailer for Doom Eternal shows that imps will return, but it's hard to say if this will be the standard imp in the game, or if it's just a separate type. But this one appears to be bulkier with brown skin, and the spikes on its back are now aligned in different angles, and the eyes are now red. 
the new design seems to resemble the classic imp. So that covers the history and evolution of the imp and doom. Which version do you like the most? Tell me in the comment section. The Baron of Hell in Doom was listed as being the highest ranking demon within the Order of the Hell Knights. During the story of the Doom game in 2016, some UAC files had reported that a Baron of Hell was never captured for scientific research. They are bloodthirsty fighters that are extremely powerful. Due to the nature of them being so rare and evasive, they mostly reside in the lower bowels of Hell. During a survey of the Great Step, a tablet was discovered, and it said this about the barons. They were the royal guards of the Dark Lord from the Fourth Age. While the power of the barons is unmatched by any other common demon, their power is also linked to their master status in Hell. When their master becomes more powerful, so will the Baron of Hell. Their appearance in the original Doom game was similar to the Hell Knight, but with a different skin tone. The Baron of Hell was absent from Doom 3, and only the Hell Knight was used for the story at that time. But, in the latest Doom game from 2016, the two enemies were given different designs. While the Hell Knight was mostly a melee type of enemy, the Baron of Hell was given the same attacks, along with the ability to throw projectiles of Argent Energy. It can also slam its fist into the ground and release an explosive burst of power. The story of the Hell Knights tells us that they served their master up until the time it was defeated by the Guardian. Then the Hell Knights were placed in the arenas in Hell. There, they would feed on any victims thrown to them by the demon overlords. Now they are given the task of guarding the most sacred relics in the Netherworld. The design of the Hell Knight closely resembled the version seen in Doom 3. And as for the Barons of Hell, their design was a modified version of the one seen in the original Doom game. They retained their horns and the reddish pink color, but their skin design was changed to look like armor plating. Their body type is bulky and muscular, and their fingers have sharp claws for tearing away at flesh, and they also have goat legs with hoofed feet. While the barons of hell are seen as a high-ranking demon, they often don't get along with lesser demons, and this can lead to infighting between the other species in hell. The Barons of Hell are also known to mostly attack in pairs. This could be a reference to when they first appeared in the first Doom game. Back then, they were also known as the Bruiser Brothers. Now the source code of Doom even had them listed as MT Bruiser. Now the Barons of Hell appearing in pairs was supposed to be a parody of the Hammer Brothers in Super Mario Brothers. And throughout the original Doom game, the face of the Baron of Hell can be seen on wall textures. So that's another creature in Doom that I want to look at. It's one of my favorites alongside the Cyber Demon. I'm happy how the Hell Knight and the Baron of Hell have a different design and backstory. So which creature in Doom is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section. What is the Kako Demon in Doom? There have been many creatures in the Doom franchise, and while most of them are bipedal, the Kako Demon is one of the few monsters to have a very different design. The original version appeared to have a red body in the form of a head, and a set of horns at the top. Its large mouth was blue inside, filled with many sharp teeth, but also accompanied with a twisted, evil grin, and a single green eye was used for sight. It also appears to have no visible limbs. Its body would float around, and when it finds a target, it would let out a loud hissing sound. It would either bite at close range, or spit plasma balls from a distance. Now, despite its body being somewhat large, its weight could not withstand the impact from the player's weapons. This resulted in the Kako Demon being pushed back slowly when it takes damage. The name Kako Demon comes from the Greek word Kako Daimon, which means evil spirit. But in Latin, the word Kako can mean to poop or defecate which could explain why it has two holes in the back of its body. The Kako Demon does have a similar design to the Beholder in the Dungeons & Dragons franchise. Its final design was inspired by another creature of the same franchise, the Astral Dreadnought. There was a book called Manual of Planes, which was an expansion to Dungeons & Dragons. Only the head was used to create the Kako Demon. If you place their heads side by side, you can see the similarities. This monster was not always called the Kako Demon. The Doom novels would call the Kako Demons by a different name, 
They were simply known as pumpkins, perhaps just to add some humor to the story, or because of the shape of their bodies. The Doom comic book also did not call them caco demons. They were described as big-mouthed floating thingies. Another creature in the Doom franchise that shared a similar design to the caco demon was the Pain Elemental. It still had a large round body with a single eye, but it also had two small arms and different horns. They differed in design, color, and attack methods. The Pain Elemental would spawn lost souls to attack the player, and upon its death, it would merely just explode. In the Doom 64 video game, the Caco Demon's design was changed to look similar to the original Pain Elemental. Its skin was now brown in color, and it also had a single yellow eye in its head, but it also had two arms and broken chains. Meanwhile, the Pain Elemental would also get a new design. Its skin color was now pink, and it had a single green eye in its head, just like the original Caco Demon. They also removed the arms and replaced them with two large mouths. This would allow it to spawn more lost souls more frequently. The Caco Demon would undergo another design change in Doom 3. The skin color was now different. Along with having a wider mouth, multiple green eyes, there was also some tentacles on its lower body. The top part of its head had an exposed brain, and it also flew across the map quickly, unlike the original Caco Demon that just floated. This version of the Caco Demon was originally going to spit lost souls as well. It looked similar to the Pain Elemental from Doom 2, so it's possible it could have been a hybrid of two monsters at some point. Now, in the Doom game from 2016, the Caco Demon's design was reverted to look like the original in some way, but with some minor changes. The top part of its body had red armor plates. They also realigned the formation of the teeth on its mouth. The lower part had a bulge, which could have been a larger stomach. It also had four stunted limbs underneath its body, but they appeared to be useless. The energy ball was also changed. It now had the properties of bile. It would impair the victim's vision and slow them down for a short time. A new attack was also added to this game in the form of a tongue snare. The tongue would latch onto a target and pull them in to get eaten. But one of the mysteries about the Caco Demon was... How is it able to fly with no limbs? The UAC had a file on this creature, and they concluded that it was psionic in nature, and their desire to feed has overtook what little intelligence they had. The word Caco Demon has been spotted in things like paintings, a book by Lev Grosman, a boulder in Squamish, Canada, and the second album Legion from the band Dayside contains a song called Satan Spawn, the Caco Diamond. But... The first time the word Caco Demon was used was in a play written by Shakespeare, and this was in 1398. So that covers the Caco Demon in Doom. I've also covered other topics in the Doom franchise, so check them out if you want. This monster in Doom has been known by a few names. It's been called Pinky, the Bull Demon, Pinky Demon, or just Demon. The different names represent its attack methods skin color, and its demon-like features. The Doom Manual has this description about them, sort of like a shaved gorilla, except with horns, a big head, lots of teeth, and harder to kill. Don't get too close, or they'll rip your fragging head off. Its body structure is somewhat humanoid, yet very muscular with demonic feet and hands. Something very odd about its legs are that the knees are bent backwards, this gives them a more twisted design. The head is rather large with two horns at the top. Along with having a set of sharp teeth, its eyes give off the feeling of a hungry, angry animal. The sounds it makes are somewhat similar to a lion. The Pinky Demon is known for close range combat. Its run speed is rather quick which can close the gap between itself and its prey. Their massive jaws will bite down on a target, ripping out the flesh and tearing them apart. During its development, the demon's legs were drawn up by using a digitized picture of a Dilophosaurus toy from the Jurassic Park brand, and the name Doom was taken from a pool scene in the movie The Color of Money. Vincent Loria gets asked a question, 
What's inside the case he's holding? He opens it up to reveal a custom-made pool stick, and he responds with, Doom. According to the Doom Bible, which was the original design document of the video game, the story would take place on a giant moon called Te Tenga. This of course was changed in the final version, but the textures with this name could still be seen inside the game. Te Tenga was also mentioned in Doom 2016 as an off-world mining station. Now the pinky was labeled as Demon Sergeants in the Doom Bible. This matches the source code name of this monster which is MT Sergeant but the humans with shotguns were called Former Human Sergeants and given the name M.T. Shotguy in the source code. The Doom Bible also says Doom was originally going to include a deep story filled with in-game cinematics and cutscenes, but this was all removed because of John Carmack. He felt the storytelling would slow down the pace of the game. The final version was reduced to a single page of text for the ending of each episode. The 0.4 version of Doom had a very minor difference when it came to the Pinky Demon's design. Compared to the final version, it was pretty much in its final stages. It also had a room with a few Doom Marines playing cards, something that was taken from the Doom Bible's original story. When the game was updated to version 0.5, the Pinky Demon's death animation was changed. It now spurted blood from its body while expanding horizontally. This could have been the result of an explosive causing this death animation. Some pinkies would have the power of invisibility. These were labeled as specters, and they functioned the same way. When Doom was ported on different platforms, the invisibility effect of the specter would be altered in different ways. Another version of this enemy was called the Nightmare Specter, and it was just bigger. This demon appeared on the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn version. The manual says this about them. If you like the specter, meet his tougher brother. I also want to mention the different types of pinky demons in the Doom RPG game. The bull demon was olive green in color, Belphegor was blue, and there was also the standard pinky. And if that wasn't enough, the Doom 2 RPG game featured a boss called the Pinky Nader. It was a boss that spawns in bull demons. When Doom 64 was released in 1997, the pinky demon would also make a return. Its design underwent a few minor changes, but still resembling the original in some way. It was now bulkier, the horns were black, the claws were longer and curved, and its eyes were red. This gave the pinky demon a more menacing look. The specter was also seen in this game, however, it was not a common enemy. When 2004 rolled around, Doom 3 was released, and the pinky demon would return again, but this time it received a completely different design. There were no visible eyes, its horns would point straight forward from the side of its head. Its lower body was replaced with small mechanical legs, forcing the demon to walk on all fours, and at close range it would attack with bites and stomps. During the making of the Doom 3 documentary, it was mentioned that the new story was not connected to Doom or Doom 2, so Doom 3 was going to have its own separate story, but at the same time, they wanted the visual effects, story, and monsters to complement the original Doom. Despite some monsters having new designs, you could tell what type of demon they were portraying. An early version of Doom 3 was shown at E3 in 2002, and it had a gory scene with a pinky demon. It was seen to be eating the guts of a zombie, but in the final version, the pinky was replaced by another zombie. The designers have said when a pinky demon is born, it is buried in thick folds of flesh, so it has to consume itself to breathe and eat. Some levels of hell in Doom 3 did contain hanging bodies that belonged to the pinkies. There's no explanation as to who did this, but there is speculation that pinkies are used as a food source. The Doom movie from 2005 would use a similar design to the pinky. The body was attached to a bionic wheelchair. A theory as to why it did not mutate into an imp or hell knight is the virus had less of his body to fully infect. When the alpha version of Doom 2016 was leaked, the pinky, along with other monsters, were found inside the game files. The book called The Art of Doom looks at different design aspects of Doom 2016. They go over the ideas of monsters, weapons, story, and environments. The pinky demon was undergoing a few changes at this time, but its final version would look similar to the one from the original Doom game. The UAC report file on the pinky says they were first discovered by a Lazarus Project tethering operation. At that time, they had no way to name the creature, 
so instead they chose to name it after their unusual skin pigmentation. Some bodies pulled from the portals appear to have been gnawed at, suggesting that pinkies are eaten by other demons. The UAC would go on to study the creature even more, and their studies would reveal this. The pinky has a limited visual perception and relies on pheromones to detect and locate its enemies. Their behavior seems to be naturally aggressive. When it detects a prey, they will charge it like a battering ram. The hard bone on their body provides them with some level of resistance, but their weakness is their fleshy back. They can accelerate quickly for the initial charge, but have little control over their movements afterwards. When they are at close range, it uses a dangerous bite attack. During this charge attack, it has a hard time turning or coming to a complete stop. This can sometimes lead to them running over ledges, which can lead to their death, or even smashing into a wall, which will destroy the faceplate. The Pinky Demon was playable in the multiplayer of Doom 2016, but this version was granted invisibility, which is actually called the Spectre Pinky. It used a bull rush attack, a claw attack, and a glory kill. The invisibility would deactivate during any attack and reactivate on its own. When it comes to the origins of the Spectre in Doom 2016, the story says they were designed by the UAC when they tried to genetically modify the pinky with the eye of the Kaku demon. This procedure was meant to improve their vision by implanting an optic nerve from the Kaku demon, but instead this gave the pinky limited psionic powers like invisibility. Several subjects died during this procedure, but only one survived. Its holding pen was then opened by its keeper when it thought the pinky had escaped. This allowed it to slip away undetected, and it is presumed it was teleported back to hell by a summoner. Several months later after this incident, two specters were captured. They are not sure how it was able to breed, but its offspring also carried the psionic trait of invisibility. So that's it for the history and evolution of the pinky demon. Which design do you like the most? Tell me in the comment section. My favorite was the one featured in Doom 3. I think this design is a hellish creation, combining something demonic, organic, and mechanical into something truly evil. As much as I do like the version in Doom 2016, I think Doom 3's Pinky Demon is the best one. They took it to a whole new level and gave it an entirely different look. The body, face, and how it moves is very different from the other versions. I also got a chance to bring up some facts about the original Doom concept. This gave you an idea that some aspects of Doom were going in a different direction until it was changed. The Mancubus, another demon from hell. First appearing in Doom 2, this creature had a humanoid shape, with a large fat body supported by stumpy elephant-like legs. Its skin is light brown in color, and its two green eyes give off a feeling of hate and dread. The Mancubus moves around very slow, but it's also very resilient to damage. It is equipped with two flamethrowers, they are connected by tubes that are grafted to the monster's back. There's a small description of them in the game manual. It says this, The only good thing about Fatso is that he's a nice wide target. Good thing, because it takes a lot of hits to puncture him. He pumps out fireballs like there was no tomorrow. The name Mancubus seems to be partially taken from two medieval demon names, Succubus, a female demon, and Incubus, a male demon. The succubus would appear in the dreams of men, while the incubus would prey upon women who are asleep, but these names are replaced with a syllable of man to form the name mancubus. The Latin definition of manducare means to chew, devour, or eat, and the word mancus refers to being crippled, maimed, or having a missing limb. This resembles the mancubus not having any arms, but instead they have flamethrowers. So, with the different names, it seems that Mancubus could be a combination of different meanings, like one who eats a lot and is missing limbs. Now, according to the model of the Mancubus, it was shown to have six nipples, but the in-game representation seems to only have two. John Romero did say on Twitter of what the Mancubus says when it fires its weapons. It says, Mena blana blah. The Megasphere that appears later in Doom 2 seems to have a face similar to the Mancubus, 
But in Doom 64, the Megasphere looks to resemble the Doom Marine's helmet. Speaking of Doom 64, it was released in 1997. The Mancubus kept the similar design idea of having a large body, slow movement speed, and a cannon on each arm. But some things on its body were changed. The skin color was now dark brown, and it wore a body harness, and the face was given a new look. It resembled some type of bear. Now back in the 90s, an issue of Nintendo Power Magazine did include this type of Mancubus on the cover. Then, seven years later, Doom 3 was released in 2004, and the Mancubus would also return. This time, its skin was now greenish-gray in color, but the face had a new design. There was a central tentacle that acted as a breathing tube. Upon closer inspection of this tube, tiny holes were located on the side. Each tentacle on the side is supposed to act like the mouth of an octopus. You can find some hooks with suckers where it's attached to the face, but we're not sure if it has a beak inside. An early design of the mouth was going to look like a tusk, similar to an elephant, but due to a glitch with the graphics and the model, it was changed to be a feeding tool. Doom 3 also had a demon called the Vagary. It was a combination of a spider and a human woman. Her transparent body part shows what looks like a malformed mancubus fetus. This leads to speculation that she could be the mother of the mancubus. Now, in the book called The Art of Doom, which was about the design aspect of Doom 2016, it mentions that the mancubus is a lumbering behemoth with a foul stench. When they reach maturity, they are given light armor. They will gorge on anything they can find, and even rancid flesh. This repulsive diet rots in their digestive system, which makes their innards volatile and highly flammable. Because they eat almost anything, their weight gets out of control. They would then outgrow their armor to where their stomach and face are exposed. There was even an early design to where the mancubus would have a more slim build. It was then given a single eye, and the teeth were aligned in a different formation. One very interesting fact about the mancubus is how it formed the weapon on its arm. In terms of the Mancubus from Doom 2016, they did have some information about this. They formed this hard barrel from the chitinous growth on its skin. As the flesh inside decomposes, it forms a noxious effluvium. They spew the discharge from the barrel and the effect is a biomechanical flamethrower. The story of Doom 2016 also mentions that the Mancubus were altered by the UAC. When they were held in captivity, Dr. Pierce and her team of geneticists would try to manipulate their behavior. Their weapons were altered to make use of its highly toxic bile. Their cannons would launch these balls of bile much further and with more accuracy, and their purpose was to poison any organic creature it hits. The UAC did try to provide them with better fitting armor, but they always outgrew their new uniforms within a few weeks. Even though the two versions of Mancubus are slightly different, they both serve as long-range attackers. The original is meant for fire damage, while the Cyber Mancubus is designed for poison damage with their bile. The chest plate on the Cyber Mancubus did have a UAC logo, while the original had a demonic rune. The multiplayer version used the model of the Cyber Mancubus, while its flaming attacks were taken from the standard Mancubus. The multiplayer in Doom 2016 did allow you to use the Mancubus. It was slow moving, fired double rockets that arced, and had a huge body. While it was armored, its weak point is the power core located on its chest. Shooting this area will deal more damage. While the rockets were very strong in multiplayer, it was balanced out in a way of having a cooling system. Using your rockets would overheat the cannons, but to cool them down, you would need to use the secondary fire, which also serves as an attack for enemies that are too close. The Doom RPG game for mobile devices did have multiple versions of many demons. The Mancubus had three variations in this game, the blue one was called the Behemoth, the red one was the Drudge, and of course, the standard Mancubus. Now, if you're wondering why some gamers will call this demon by two different names, Mancubus is a name for one demon, while Mancubi is a name for multiple demons of this type. Regardless of how many are on screen at once, I've always called them Mancubus. The Cyber Demon, half unfeeling machine, half raging horn devil. Witness what will be unleashed on Earth. One of the most powerful enemies in the Doom series, it is a tall, muscular creature with the appearance combining a minotaur and a machine. 
It also has dark horns, a cybernetic right leg, and a large rocket launcher on its left arm. Some visible wiring can be seen on its lower torso, and some patches of metal and wires on its right arm. Now it first appeared in the original Doom game on the level E2M8, along with some lost souls in the same area. When it spots a target to kill, it will let out a loud roar. This roar is so loud that it can be heard from a great distance. It also has a great resistance to splash damage that forces the player to use direct hits, although one exception to this rule is the BFG weapon. Now in later versions of the game, it was given a melee attack and also the ability to stomp the player in one hit with its right leg. Although it is a demonic being from hell, it may sometimes fire at other creatures and a battle between them may occur. This can be a useful strategy to save ammunition and let the creatures from hell kill each other. Now back in the original Doom game, there was a door texture with a skull of a horned creature. This was the Cyber Demon. And the cover art also featured a Baron-like creature with a cybernetic cannon on one of its arms, something very similar to a Cyber Demon. The novel of the game does tend to call these enemies by different names, and the Cyber Demon's mechanical parts are said to be powered by steam, and it was given the name the Steam Demon. Now the Doom 64 version had kept its original design, but just elaborated on the details that were taken from the first game. This design of the Cyber Demon is my personal favorite. The design of the Cyber Demon was changed slightly over the future video games. In Doom 3, it still appeared to replicate the look of the original Doom game, but this time appearing much taller, thinner, having a tail and some machinery on its back. Both of its legs were now mechanical in some sense. It would appear near the end of the game guarding a hellhole, a large portal to hell. Although in this game, the Cyber Demon is immune to all the player's conventional weapons. The only way to kill it is by using the ancient Martian artifact known as the Soul Cube. Now its original name was the Harbringer of Doom, and it was seen in Wolfenstein RPG. The player would destroy its left arm and right leg with the Spear of Destiny. And in Doom 4, some UAC files mention of a battle that took place during the Third Age. They later found the body of a Shadow Lord that they thought was a Balgar Demon. They took its body and started to piece it together with the use of Argent Energy, which reanimated its dead cells. And this created the Cyber Demon we all know today. Half Demon, Half Machine. Its appearance underwent some changes in Doom 4 as well. Its horns are different from the original, and the left one is broken off. It also has four eyes, and its right torso has an Argent Accumulator on it. Although its rocket launcher can fire multiple small rockets, it can charge up the attack and fire a laser. Its back is equipped with a weapon that shoots an aerial blast of missiles to bombard the battlefield. This can quickly take out multiple targets. And its right arm has a large blade that allows it to use a flaming attack. And when it is encountered in hell later on, it gains the ability to summon pillars of rock to trap its target. It also has the ability to use some type of propulsion on its back that allows it to move quickly across the battlefield. It is first killed by removing the energy supply on its chest and later on decapitated in hell. The Spider Mastermind was a boss in the original Doom games. Commanding the army from hell, it led the battle against the humans on Phobos and Deimos, sending out squads of hell knights, arachnotrons, and imps across specific areas to ensure their control. Now, it appeared as a huge brain with a face and two small arms. It was mounted atop a cybernetic body with four mechanical legs. Although the smaller arachnotrons used plasma rifles, the spider mastermind only used a super chain gun, and just like the cyber demon, it lets out a loud, demonic roar. A benefit from its massive size is being immune to splash damage, so the player must rely on direct hits on its body. When it engages in combat, it will continuously shoot with a super chain gun and only stop when the target dies or it goes behind cover. Although it commands the demons of hell, in some cases it will fight against the other creatures if they fire upon the spider mastermind. Now in the Doom game from 2016, the spider mastermind was created by using Olivia Pierce as a host. Her body is hit by some demonic power and she sinks into a pool of blood, only to emerge as a gigantic brain with mechanical legs. The design was very similar to the original Spider Mastermind in the old Doom games. It attacked with firebolts from its underslung weapon and would sometimes turn itself upside down to attack. Although being a large enemy, 
it could quickly dash to the side and use a melee attack at close range. There was also a weapon that fired multiple laser beams from its body. It would also raise pillars with spikes on them, and it may sometimes electrify the floor. And the very same pillars could be controlled by its mind and thrown at the Doomslayer. There was even a UAC file about the first Project Lazarus tethering operation that found some information about a rare reference to the Arania Imperatrix, which was described as a mystical unknown being. This name was translated to Spider Empress. And another file mentions that a great blessing will be given to the key holder, for they will become one with the master. This is referring to Olivia Pierce in that story, and also seems to imply that the spider mastermind is the true leader amongst the demons. Now the idea of a giant brain being a villain was used in other sources like the 1986 movie Invaders from Mars and the villain Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Another interesting note about this enemy is that in the original Doom games it had less hit points than the cyber demon, but it's possible that due to its intelligence this was the reason why it was appointed as a boss after the cyber demon its physical traits of being a large brain was very fitting in being the commander of Hell's army. The Hell Knight, a powerful and monstrous demon. They are relentless, savage, and brutal. A true force of Hell that should not be underestimated. The Hell Knights first appeared in Doom 2, while the stronger counterpart, the Barons of Hell, appeared as bosses at the end of the first episode in the original Doom game. These two variations are very similar by their physical structure, but they differ in color and their stance within Hell. The Hell Knight gives off demonic sounds. The Barons of Hell are the stronger versions, therefore they are seen rarely through the campaign, while the Hell Knights are just clones of them, but they are weaker and are seen a bit more frequently. The description of the Hell Knight in Doom 2 was actually taken from the Baron of Hell from the first Doom game, and then the Baron of Hell in Doom 2 was given a new description. The Doom RPG game would also include three versions of this demon, but the only new one was the Green Ogre, and it was listed as being the weakest of the three. Doom 64 would have both the Hell Knight and the Baron of Hell, but they were prone to infighting between each other. In 2004, the Hell Knight would appear in Doom 3. This is when their design went in a different direction. It no longer resembled the original Hell Knight. This one lacked any horns and hooves. Now, they had no visible nose on their face. The ears looked deformed in some way, and almost looking like they were fused to the side of their heads. While their eyes appeared to be very small and black, their height could be around 10 feet tall. The first time you encounter a Hell Knight in Doom 3, there would be two of them. This could be a nod towards the final boss of the first episode in Doom, where you would fight two Barons of Hell. Another version of the monster appears later in the game. When the player goes to Hell, it will have a different set of colors on its body. It's also covered in scars and the forehead has a demonic pentagram on it. When Doom 3 was being developed, one version of the game showed a demon that was dubbed as the Birdman from the community. This was a result of the bird-like features on its face. But when you saw this demon in action, its size and animation looked very similar to the final version of the Hell Knight. So there was some speculation that this was an early version of the Hell Knight. Some early artwork shows the different designs the Hell Knight could possibly have taken. I actually like how this looks but I think this would have fit the Baron of Hell instead. But since the Barons were not in Doom 3, the Hell Knight would be given the power to throw plasma balls. The alpha version of Doom 3 shows that Hell Knights would almost never launch projectiles. Maybe it just wasn't fully implemented yet. But their main attack was a close range, double fisted smash attack. And it even had a finishing move where it ripped the Marine's head off and then took a bite into it. The UAC did manage to examine a partial Hell Knight specimen. The scientists were unable to discover how these creatures manifest plasma masses, but it did turn out to be one of the largest and most ferocious creatures ever seen. The Hell Knights rely on their brute strength to overpower their prey. Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil had three hunters based off the Hell Knight model. Each Hell Hunter had their own special ability and they had specific requirements to be defeated. They were sent by Maledict to recover the artifact from the marine. The artifact will then gain an ability similar to the power of that Hellhunter. 
these hell hunters were encountered by the ancient Martian civilization long ago. Stone tablets of them were left behind, which is found later in the game. It's also worth mentioning that the Hell Knight in the 2005 Doom movie had taken inspiration from the Doom 3 Hell Knight. One of the new demons in this expansion was the Bruiser, having a muscular body similar to the Hell Knight but just slightly shorter. Its arms were replaced with fireball launchers and its feet were cybernetic hooves. This monster also featured some horns and a strange television screen that acted as its mouth. Depending on the actions of the Bruiser, the TV screen would display something different. It's possible that some early artwork like this one could have been the basis of the Bruiser, but one theory is that this was a new version of a Baron of Hell that was eventually modified. Another theory says that it could be a hybrid of a Hell Knight and Mancubus. When the latest Doom game was released in 2016, the Hell Knight's design was once again inspired by Doom 3's Hell Knight. They relied on their brute strength to smash a target at close range. As they slam their fist on the ground, it releases a shockwave that can stun a target. They would also use their powerful legs to leap great distances. This version was mainly focused on close range melee combat and did not shoot projectiles. When the UAC recovered a tablet, it gave us some history about the Hell Knight. It mentions that they flanked the Great Serpent, but when their master was defeated by the Guardian, the Hell Knights were placed in the arenas of Hell, where they were seen as gladiators. The Demon Overlord would send in victims, which the Hell Knights would feed upon, but now they are believed to guard the most sacred and important relics of Hell. When Doom was shown at QuakeCon in 2015, the Imps had a design similar to the Hell Knights, but this was later changed in the final version. I like how they made the Hell Knights different in appearance to the Barons. It gives them a more unique look instead of being a clone. What happened to the Barons of Hell at the end of Episode 2, Mission 8 in Doom? And what is the story of the Tower of Babel? Throughout the story of the original game, the Doom Marine would encounter many creatures from Hell. As he bled through many battles, he pushed on to continue his fight. His journey would not end, destroying countless enemies that stood before him. Along the way, he fought against the Hell Knights, a goat-like demon with an appetite for death and carnage. If that wasn't enough, the Doom Marine would face off against the Barons of Hell, an even tougher version of the Hell Knights. They were powerful, demonic creatures and able to withstand a lot of punishment. Up until now, there was nothing stronger than a Baron of Hell. So, at the beginning of Episode 2, Mission 8, who could have killed the four Barons of Hell? They were hung up and disemboweled, having suffered injuries like a torn arm, a missing leg, a huge hole in their abdomen, and also some scratch marks. Whatever did this, the Doom Marine has yet to see it. Seeing the corpse of a Baron of Hell does give you the sense that there is something bigger and stronger out there. The Doom game in 2016 did mention some lore about the Hell Knights and the Barons of Hell. Although they were similar in some small way, Hell Knights were placed in arenas and used as gladiators. They were later in charge of guarding important relics from Hell. And the Baron of Hell, they were seen as one of the strongest monsters from Hell. Therefore, they were placed as the royal guard of an unknown Dark Lord. So, what could have killed such a large monster from Hell? This area gives the player a sense of disbelief that there was something stronger than a Baron of Hell. Hell is known to be a hostile place where the demons fight against each other, so this could have been the result of infighting. But one other theory is that the Cyber Demon could have killed them off because they could not stop the Doom Marine, so he punished them for their failure. You can see the scratch marks on their legs might possibly match the size of the Cyber Demon's hand and the large hole in their chest might have been from a rocket, along with the other limbs being blown off from the explosion. But since the lost souls were seen in the area of the Cyber Demon, it seems they were left alive. So perhaps the Barons were punished because they were seen as lieutenants in Hell's army. The final level in Episode 2, Mission 8, does have an interesting name. This level is called the Tower of Babel, and it's named after a biblical story where humans tried to build a tower to heaven, but this was later destroyed by God. The ending of Episode 2, Mission 8, does have some connection to the story. It says that Deimos floats above Hell itself 
acting as some sort of bridge to hell. Now, I found it really interesting how these two are connected, yet separated by their place in heaven and hell. The tower to heaven was destroyed by God, but the pathway to hell was destroyed by a man. So, it adds a deep understanding to how persistent man can be in trying to reach past their mortal realm. The Tower of Babel is also seen being constructed by the forces of hell as the Doom Marine is advancing in the story. When Doom was ported to Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn, this level was pushed back after Episode 3 Mission 7. Perhaps this was meant to delay the big reveal of the Cyber Demon. The sky graphics were changed and they added some Mancubus monsters. The opening area seems to be missing the Barons of Hell hang on the wall. They were replaced with something else. Some other ports like the 3DO, Jaguar, and Game Boy Advance would use the Tower of Babel name for another level, but it did not have the Cyber Demon boss. Since Episode 2 takes place on an asteroid called Deimos, it was originally supposed to be full of UAC facilities, but since it was being overrun by demonic forces, they were later altered by the demonic invaders. The environment then gets twisted and corrupted and replaced with wood, marble, and stone. This change would clearly represent the name of Episode 2, The Shores of Hell, giving you a small look into how different Hell would appear. The Tower of Babel is also listed as being the only level in Episode 2 to not have the plasma gun. While the music selected for this stage was called Nobody Told Me About ID, it was a reference to the Doom Manual not listing anything about some monsters, like the Cyber Demon. The Icon of Sin was the most mysterious boss in the Doom franchise. Showing up in the final stage of Doom 2, it appeared as a goat-like biomechanical head on a wall with an exposed brain. This final boss did not count as an enemy because it was just a wall texture. It would summon endless enemies to attack the player. The actual target was John Romero's head hidden behind its brain and it was placed there as an easter egg. The Icon of Sin would have some dialogue that made no sense, but when the sound file was reversed, it said this, To win the game, you must kill me, John Romero. This easter egg was created by the artists on the development team. It was supposed to be hidden until John Romero himself found it when he was exploring the map with the no clipping cheat mode. Nobody told John Romero about this, so he decided to add a little message to let the artist know that he found it. He recorded the sound file, then its pitch was changed and reversed to sound like something demonic. The original scan of John Romero's face was taken from a Business Week photo shoot in 1994. Even though only its head was visible in Doom 2, the ending does say it had limbs, so it's possible it had a very large body as well. It was known by many names like Demon Spitter, The Gatekeeper, Wall Demon, Boss Brain, or just Boss. The official name of the final boss of Doom 2 was confirmed by John Romero on Twitter in 2016. He said it was called the Icon of Sin. And in the Doom 2 RPG game, it appeared with a bulky body made of mechanical parts with a goat head. The UAC's computer systems were infected and a virtual version of the Icon of Sin can be encountered in the game. It went by the name of V-I-O-S. The sound file used for the Spawn Cube was also used by other companies. It was used in several movies, one of them was Dragonheart, and also the TV series of Xena Warrior Princess, and a documentary called The Hawking Paradox. The file name of what the Icon of Sin says in Doom 2 was also copied in Half-Life Opposing Force, but it's unclear if it was used in the game at all. The sound file says this, To win the game, you must kill me, Randall Pitchford. The Icon of Sin's design was taken from a demon named Baphomet, and the way it spawns monsters in Doom 2 was a reference to a book from John Milton called Paradise Lost. The book was about the story of how Adam and Eve had lost their place in the Garden of Eden. It also mentions how Satan gave birth to his daughter Sin. She was born through his head and was the gatekeeper of hell. Now in the Doom game from 2016, there was a little information about the Icon of Sin. The story goes back to a time when a civilization of humanoids worshipped the elemental wraiths of Arjun Danur, who were seen as gods. They were protected by the strongest warriors called the Night Sentinels. 
The first age was a time when the demons of hell would invade Argent de Nur, but they failed because of the Night Sentinel's use of the elemental wraith's powers. Later on, a hell priest called De Grave would strike a deal with a warrior of Argent de Nur. This warrior wanted his son brought back to him because he was lost in the war, and in return, he would show the hell priest where the Night Sentinels rested. And when they were defenseless, De Grave put a curse on them and trapped their souls forever. This would later be known as the Well, which then became the source of Argent energy for the UAC. This warrior who gave up Argent de Nur to Hell would then be known as the Betrayer. But when it was time to return his son to him, he was brought back, but in the form of the Icon of Sin. It was a weapon of infernal mass destruction, and with it, Hell conquered the land. The Betrayer was then repaid with suffering. The Doomslayer Testaments also mention the Betrayer would then go on to bestow the Doomslayer with armor to get revenge against Hell. The Icon of Sin was reported by the UAC to remain dormant when it was seen in the Doom game from 2016. Imagine yourself worshipping before the Icon of Sin, in awe of its splendor, even as it sleeps till the call of ages comes. If you fired a rocket launcher upon the Icon of Sin, it would release a spawn cube that was seen in Doom 2. The original design for this image in Doom from 2016 was just supposed to be an homage of the final boss of Doom 2, but it was kept in the game throughout development and eventually became the icon of sin for the story. The last thing that I want to talk about is the box art of Doom. John Romero and an illustrator by the name of Don Punchetz were working with a bodybuilder to come up with the perfect pose for the game. But as John suggested many poses, the bodybuilder just could not picture the scene of demons around him. After 10 minutes of trial and error, John told the bodybuilder to pose as a dying demon that was grabbing his leg and arm, while John would pose as the doom guy with a gun. John gave the perfect pose and they settled for the demon in grabbing his arm instead of his leg. So in some way, John Romero is the doom guy, but just on the box art. One of the mysteries of the original doom game lore are about the words frag and jib. What is their meaning and origin? This video will cover those two topics alongside the origin of the name id software. As you go through the story mode, upon finishing a level, you receive a menu that displays your completion stats, like time, secrets found, and how many kills you have. These kills are based on demons you defeated. But in multiplayer, the counter for kills is then changed to the word frag. When you defeat another player, it counts as a frag. But why is this changed for the multiplayer game mode? Is there a reason? Well, first, we have to look at other meanings to frag. It's taken from fragmentation grenades, but here's the problem. Doom never had any grenades as weapons. It was mostly about the guns, along with the chainsaw and your fists. So how does fragmentation fit into the Doom universe? The word fragging means to kill or attempt to kill a fellow soldier. This was most common during the Vietnam War. When some soldiers of a platoon were led by their commanding officer, like a platoon sergeant or lieutenant, some leaders would use very aggressive and risky tactics to win a battle. They would use their men's lives just for their own victory and accolades. For some leaders, it was better for them to return with some sort of accomplishment instead of nothing, but at the cost of their men's lives. Aside from that, there were even cases where harassment by their superiors would end up with the men turning on their leaders. Most of these incidents occurred within the Army and Marine Corps. It was very rare to hear about this in the Navy or the Air Force. When this did happen, it was mostly linked to support-based units and very few times from soldiers in combat. Because the war was perceived as lost, some soldiers were reluctant to continue fighting for something they could not win, but they were sometimes pushed to do so by their superiors. So fragging a superior officer was a way to discourage future leaders into forcing the soldiers to fight a battle they could not win. Fragmentation grenades were the most common method of fragging a commanding officer or superior in the military because they were untraceable to a person. They could make up a story and it was hard to prove them wrong, especially on the battlefield. One could say, enemy soldiers threw back our grenade and it landed near the lieutenant. We had no time to react 
and so the lieutenant was hit by the explosion. That's one example. If we go back to Doom, when you go into multiplayer, the kill counter is replaced with the word frag. Since you're only shooting other Doom guy soldiers, this is how it connects to the word fragging and fragmentation. Frag is the short word for fragging. It means the act of a soldier killing or attempting to kill another fellow soldier. This comes from fragmentation grenades and its story from the Vietnam War. Now keep in mind, I was not able to find an official statement as to why frag was used in Doom, but this story is probably a very good connection. Now onto the story of the word jib. It began in Doom from 1993, but is also used in Quake games as well. Jib is a term given to a specific animation in these games. When a player or demon takes equal damage from a weapon to its remaining health points, it goes through a standard death animation. But when the damage of a weapon exceeds the remaining health points by a large threshold, the target goes through a special animation. Chunks of its flesh, organs, and bone fall apart. The rocket launcher and BFG cause this jib animation to occur more frequently. But not all enemies in Doom have this animation created for them. Other forms of jibbing can occur from crushing pillars or doors closing on a target, which results in a pool of blood. Enemies that are jibbed can be resurrected by the archvile. And although the cyber demon only has one death animation, it resembles what looks like a jib animation. It explodes in a bloody pulp. This animation will always play, regardless of the weapon used. Doom 3 also had a feature of jibbing, but this occurred with a lower class of enemies. The shotgun would be the ideal weapon to cause this animation, but you can also shoot bodies on the floor for the same effect. Even the pistol would cause this jibbing animation on defeated zombies or dead humans. Other games like Heretic and Hexen would also use this feature, but again, only some enemies were given these animations, and only certain weapons would cause this effect of jibbing. So, where does the word jib come from? Well, according to an article on Structure Too Big about Adrian Carmack, who was an artist at id Software, he was credited in using this term for doom. Jib is short for giblet, and giblets are guts of a chicken. I first heard a friend of mine use the term, once I started working at id, I would call the guts I drew, jibs. However, this article also says that the name given to this animation was previously created by John Romero. I am pretty sure that Romero was the inventor of the word, and I know for a fact that he and everyone else at id pronounces it jib, not gib. So Romero created the original name for these animations, but Adrian was the one who convinced them to call it gib. The last piece of history we can look at is the origin of id Software. While the word software is self-explanatory, but where do the first two letters of id come from? Softdisk was the former workplace for several founding members of id Software back in the day. The word id came from what the group identified as ideas from the deep. But later on, it was taken from the phrase in demand. After this, id remained in lowercase letters. This information came from the book called Masters of Doom, which talks about how John Romero and John Carmack would form id Software to create the most successful game franchise in history. Doom and Quake became legends in the gaming community. They revolutionized the FPS genre during the infancy of gaming. The book also goes on to explain how the success they found in Doom and Quake would also be the reason that tore them apart. After the events of the original Doom game along with Doom 2 and the final Doom storyline, we all thought the demons were dead. But in fact, we were so wrong. The storyline later continued in 1997 with Doom 64. The instruction manual for Doom 64 does explain how they are connected. When the previous facility was abandoned, radiation levels had built up over time. A forgotten relay satellite was barely functional. It picks up energy signatures unlike anything sampled before. It then sends out a message back to Earth, and what they see is shocking. A single entity with vast rejuvenation powers had survived. The extreme radiation levels were masking her signature, 
and so she escaped detection. This creature was able to alter decaying dead carnage back into corrupted living tissue. It was called the Mother Demon. As the only survivor from the previous Doom episodes, you return to the abandoned facility. Your assignment is clear. Merciless extermination. As you progress through the story, you will collect a new weapon of demonic origin called the Unmaker. The design of this weapon is based off the spine and ribs of a demon that fires a laser. There are three special demon keys that will upgrade the Unmaker. Upon collecting the first key, it will say this. You have the feeling that it wasn't to be touched. The second key will include this line of text. Whatever it is, it doesn't belong in this world. And the last key says this. It must do something. These demon keys enhance the firepower of the Unmaker, and this will allow it to fire three lasers. It also lets you close the three portals in the final battle against the Mother Demon. This will prevent the demons from spawning, which makes this encounter a lot easier. The physical appearance of the Mother Demon is very unique. Its body looks like a large demonic larva with four arms, but the face looks like a skull with black eyes and red irises and with a mouth filled with long, sharp teeth. There is a mystery behind its ability to float, seeing as how it does not have any wings. Upon discovering the mother demon, it lets out a chilling sound, and as she moves around, a snarl can be heard, but as you damage her, she lets out a demonic shriek. Her attacks consist of a powerful trail of flames on the floor. These can pop the player into the air, which limits their movement, followed by four homing fireballs that even go around corners. When the Unmaker is fully upgraded, it causes the Mother Demon to flinch in pain. With constant damage, she is unable to move and dies off fairly easily. During the ending of Doom 64, it says you finally got rid of the Mother of all Demons, and as the only Marine to endure the slaughter, he decides to remain in Hell, to ensure no Demon ever rises again. Now, according to the Doom Bible, which was the main concept to the original Doom game, the Unmaker was cut from that game, but later made an appearance in Doom 64. But an early version of the laser gun appeared in a magazine, which was presumed to be the Unmaker. Later on, its design was changed to be made up of bones. There's a weapon in the multiplayer of Doom 2016 that is also of demonic origin. The Reaper is made up of bone and flesh, with a lost soul for a power source. Its projectiles are somewhat similar to the Unmaker. In Doom 2016, you can find a tank containing a creature. It does have four arms and a skull-like face. It does not move at all and is possibly not fully grown. It looks similar to the Mother Demon in Doom 64. But in the book called The Art of Doom, this demon could be an immature version of the Goblin or the Abaddon. The final boss in Half-Life, Nihilanth, can resemble the Mother Demon in some way having multiple arms, a large head, and attacking with multiple homing projectiles. While the Mother Demon was a new monster for Doom 64, there were also other new demons that were never in the full version of the game. There was an interview with two members of the team behind Doom 64, Tim Hadalar and Randy Estrella. At the time, they were only involved in level design, but they were able to answer some questions. When they were asked about missing demons like the Revenant, Archfile, Spider Mastermind, and Chain Gunners, they said they were not in the game because there was limited space on the cartridge. It was also mentioned they wanted to add more levels, but they couldn't. This also explains why the Super Shotgun had missing frames during its reload animation. The Mother Demon was brought up in the questions, and they said, while they had no impact on monster design, they did provide ideas on how she acted in the level. Some early screenshots of Doom 64 did show temples from the Egyptian, Mayan, and Aztec cultures. It only appeared in the beta stages, but in the end, it was cut from the final version of the game. Around the time when Doom 64 was in its prototype stages, the lead programmer Aaron Sealer says, they wanted to implement a lot of new ideas, but id Software told everyone, don't change the equation of Doom, stick to what we know. They did talk about multiplayer in Doom 64, but in the end, they decided to not pursue that idea. They thought split-screen multiplayer would not work for Doom, a decision they would later regret. 
because GoldenEye 007 had a huge impact on split-screen multiplayer. The game's early title was called Doom Absolution, but this was later planned for a sequel to Doom 64. It was meant to be a more ambitious project, which focused heavily on multiplayer. But when other games had full 3D models and environments, the team felt their engine was outdated, so the sequel was cancelled in July of 1997. He also says a sequel could have been planned for the 64DD, which never happened, because the Nintendo 64 disk drive add-on was not popular in Japan, so it was never produced in America. In Doom 64, the map where you fight the Mother Demon and its cancelled sequel both share the word Absolution. So if you made it this far into the video, we are done. That's around 90 minutes of lore around the classic Doom game, Doom 2 and also Doom 64. If you enjoyed this video, I'll appreciate a thumbs up rating. To see more content like this in the future, then subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, my name is Carlos or Acid Glow, and I'll see you next time.